Eric Farnsworth is joining us to give us more perspective on APEC from Lima. He's the vice president at the Council of the Americas. Great to see you, Eric. During, Thanks. Good to be with you. During President Xi's uh, speech, he addressed the importance of the economy. He's pushing for the need for the free trade area of the Asia Pacific. APEC members now pushing for this initiative to be done by the end of the year. Tell us, what are the benefits and challenges of this proposal? Well, it's an aggressive proposal, both economically and politically. I mean, in order to actually get it done by the end of the year, they're going to have to resolve some pretty tricky uh, economic issues and negotiation points. But I think the bigger point really needs to be made, and that is that his speech uh, this morning was very well received. And in some ways, uh, he made a very strong uh, play for leadership of the Asia Pacific region by saying uh, China wants to move forward aggressively. We want to be the leaders of the uh, pro trade and uh, economically open uh, uh, global order. And uh, please come and join us. And this is a message I think that's resonating quite loudly here in Peru. Eric, in the U.S., as you know, there's been a lot of talk about the collapse of the TPP. What impact is President-elect Donald Trump having on this conference, if any? I think the impact is huge. I mean, look, he hasn't been inaugurated yet, so at some level we don't know what he's going to do one way or the other, and we don't know how Congress will react. That's still several weeks away. But uh, clearly the impression is that the United States is turning inward. The elections, of course, have already happened, uh, and by his rhetoric and some of his early appointments, I think people are suggesting that maybe the United States is a little bit exhausted in terms of its global role. And so that impression, coupled with the readiness, it seems, for China to step into that uh, void really is making a huge impact here uh, in uh, Lima. And it's interesting as well for even countries that are uh, particularly close to the United States economically and geographically, like Mexico. The president of Mexico said uh, in a public forum that, uh, of course, our, our links are still with the United States. That's where we want, we want to focus our, our efforts. But, uh, you know, we're willing to uh, look at other uh, possibilities to diversify as well. So uh, these are very uh, interesting times we're living in. What do you expect to come out of the bilateral talks between President Xi and U.S. President Obama? I could, you know, before November 8th, I would uh, be able to probably to give you a list of, uh, you know, priorities. November 8th, of course, being the U.S. elections. But now things have so fundamentally changed. I, I would imagine that uh, there will be a discussion about global management issues, for example, the Paris Agreement and global climate change issues, uh, the idea that uh, together, uh, we have to uh, work uh, to, to promote the economic openness, but clearly there's going to be a big discussion of bilateral issues, too, uh, in terms of economic issues between the U.S. and China. I would imagine cyber issues would come up. Uh, they're perennials in these types of discussions. But I think the conversation has changed a little bit uh, over the last couple of weeks. Eric, anything to add on the four slated topics, which are human capital development, uh, upgrading the SMEs, the food market, and the economic integration agenda? Well, you know, the official APEC agenda is always uh, pretty general uh, in nature, uh, and because it's designed by definition to appeal to all of the heads of state and leaders who are here, uh, these are all important topics. Whether concrete initiatives come out of them and are implemented, that requires individual leadership. Uh, and at this point, it appears as if uh, the leadership of the region is changing. Eric Farnsworth, thank you for that. Joining us from Lima, wonderful to see you.